These are the findings of Watson and Quick regarding DNA structure. As you can see in this diagram, DNA is made up of two strands which are twisted around each other forming a double helix structure. The two strands are anti-parallel to each other. This means that one strand runs from 5' prime to 3' prime direction and its complementary strand runs from 5' prime to 3' prime in the opposite direction. Let's have a look here. For this strand, it runs from 5' prime to 3' prime in a downward direction. However, its complementary strand run from 5' prime to 3' prime in an upward direction. Now, look at this image here. The clue is one end is a 3' prime end. Try to figure out what goes into each of the boxes. We will look again at this image by the end of the discussion of this page. The third finding is that the backbone of the strand is made up of sugar and phosphate and are located at the outside of the helix, as you can see in the diagram. The two strands are held together by hydrogen bond formed between the nitrogenous bases. As you can see in the diagram, adenine A will always pair with T via two hydrogen bonds. Meanwhile, guanine G will always pair with cytosine C via three hydrogen bonds. This is known as complementary base pairing. The four bases of DNA, A, T, C, G, can be divided into two groups, purines and pyrimidines. This is based on the number of rings that are present in them. Purines are made up of two rings, and the example of purines are adenine and guanine. Pyrimidines, however, only made up of one ring. The example of pyrimidine are cytosine and thymine. Now, based on our understanding of complementary base pairing, try and solve this problem. In a stretch of DNA, there are 20% thymine. Calculate the amount of the rest of the bases. You can pause this video now and try and solve it. Since T always pair with A, therefore the amount of T is equal to the amount of A. T plus A is equal to 20% plus 20%, which bring up to 40%. We know that if we add up all the bases, T, A, C, G, we will get everything, or in other words, we will get 100%. To find out C and G, we have to deduct 100% with the amount of T and A, which is 100% minus 40%. This gives us 60%. Since C always pair with G, therefore the amount of C is equal to the amount of G. Hence, you can get the individual amount of C and G by dividing 60% by 2 so you get 30%. The equal number between A and T and C and G is known as Chagov's rule. Now, let's revisit this image. If this end is the 3' prime end, if we go and see the other end, it must be 5' prime end here. Since we know that the two strands in DNA are anti-parallel to each other, if this end is the 5' prime end, meaning the opposite strand is the 3' prime end. And therefore, if you go up the other strand, you will see that this box is the 5' prime end.